Kaylin, you see what she's done this year. And Schoonover's ready to go. And we are underway in Lexington. That's a called first pitch strike at 632. Hannah Johnson. Fouls that one off. And now scoot over with the 0-2 pitch. We missed outside. Tom Myers, our home plate umpire. Amaris Addison at first, Carlos Guzman at third. For those of you who have not been with us before, John Crop Stadium, 200 down each of the lines and 220 to straightaway center. And that ball's up. And the Kentucky catcher just could not find it. Hallie Mitchell was looking for it, couldn't find it. Don't know she could have made a play anyway. But before she can make a play, She's got to find it. A tough ball back there against the net. I agree. I don't know if she'd have been able to cut off the trajectory before it got the backstop, but she burst on the scene with such a fantastic freshman campaign and just continues to be a leader for this Crimson Tide offense. Plays good shortstop as well. Just a lot to like about her early in her career. So it's 3-0 now. Uh, Schoonover's got to be really careful. Like you said, you can't plate it. But you don't want to put the first two on, and she does. And that wasn't close. That wasn't, you know, there hadn't been a call that you're like, okay, that was really close, but this is a tough right, spot. She's three, getting three, herself three, in in a hurry. It is, and for Alabama, this is exactly what they want. They're, you know, 13 and 0 if they score in the first inning. So there's something that works really well for them about being able to plate runners early. And Ebby Dukeshire takes ball one, so that's five, counting the first hitter. That's six straight balls now that Schoonover is thrown. Make it seven. And the more balls you throw, the harder it is to get the strike call. You know, you're, you're training the umpire on what to see from you. And yes, there's some familiarity. You see umpires consistently, but you need to establish your strike zone in the first inning, and it just hasn't happened. That one caught the inside corner. Remember the big challenge for hitters. You can see it now right at this time at John Crop Stadium. Sun sets behind the first base dugout. You can see the shadows have crept out onto the field, so the pitcher is in complete sunlight and the hitter in the shade. And every new year is a new one. Personnel changes constantly, but you have to wonder, Koala could have been such a mainstay at catcher sure. for Schoonover for so long, and you know how, how comfortable are all the parties? I get that. Swung through that one in for the second straight batter. It's three and two. There you see Kayla Kowalik. And she's assisting on staff in the UK dugout. Great pitch there from Schoonover. And you know, eventually you get comfortable and you hope it doesn't take too long, but a lot of variables at play. That was fouled away to keep the count at three and two. Johnson at second. Kahalen at first. They drew back to back walks for the Crimson Tide. Abby Dukeshire, once again, the 3-2 pitch. Little check swing, short center field. And Blanton comes on and gets that for a big out number one. And that's not the, that's not the turn at the plate that Dukeshire was hoping for. No, she leads this Alabama team in RBIs. I'm sure wanted to come through with one as Schoonover continued to really get better at finding the strike zone. Alabama needs to strike here. This is a great opportunity for them. And with one out, here's Kendall Clark. Kentucky defense can now play back in the center of the diamond. Try to turn two, and that ball's upstairs. Schoonover missed all that time last year. Mm -hmm. 
you just wonder if mentally she's gotten over that hump. Well, and she was so good. I mean, having a career year when she went out with the injury, and, and there's so much to unpack with that. But, you know, Coach Lawson talked on our call about how she's she's been better, she's been getting better. It's been a really bright spot for the coaching staff the last several outings, and you just have to think that eventually something's gonna click, and when it does, right. she's gonna be fine. It's just figuring out what that is. One and two now, the count. And the multi-sport athlete, Kendall Clark. At Ball State inside. Clark's dad played for the Cowboys, I think. Her Pat, uncle, Uncle her, Dallas her, Clark. Yep. Uh, yes, uncle, I'm yep. sorry. And so, Kendall played like six different sports. <laughs> yeah. Would Murphy say that she had got a pin in Iowa Girls High School Wrestling seven seconds? Right. She had a seven second pin. And yeah, that's, that's awesome. For anybody watching, play multiple sports. Here's Schoonover again. And that ball just missed. You know, you go back to that pitch that the crowd obviously wanted to see as a strike call. And if, if you're a little closer to the first few batters, you may get that. I, you don't know now. But it just gets hard. You get to show that picture. And what is the umpire expecting? They're just like a hitter. They're expecting something when they see it out of your hand. And so now the bases are juiced. Johnson at third, Cahalen at second, Clark at first, and in stands Marley Giles, who swings through the first pitch. Giles with four homers and eight knocked in. Still only one out in the inning. So here we are again, where Schoonover has gotten herself ahead in the count. Yeah, great job getting ahead early. Now it becomes what, what can she throw that will limit the damage on a swing, but will keep her in the driver's seat. That goes upstairs. Mitchell was able to hang on to it. You see with the bases loaded, She's done a decent job, but the object is to not get the bases loaded, I'm sure. She is all the way up, as you can see, to 24 pitches now here in the first inning. That's a tough opening frame, and Giles is on time. So right now, whether it's you know, changing a pitch location or changing the speed, doing something to disrupt the timing. And she is right on it. You know, there's a lot of ways you think about effective velocity and a pitch that's inside and high is going to look faster than a pitch that's down and away. So you can throw the same speed but make it look different if you really have that pinpoint accuracy. That's popped up behind us. She's already had an 11 pitch at bat. That was to the leadoff hitter, Johnson, who worked a walk. This now the seventh pitch to Giles here in the first. Good pitch from Schoonover. You see her leaning on that pitch. Giles trying just to fight things off deep in this count right now, behind with two strikes. Side part of the plate, and she knew it. Absolutely, that's a great pitch, especially after the sequence, right? Credit Rachel Lawson yep. calling pitches on this. You can see she gets her on the lean and then comes back with this inside pitch, just runs right inside. And that's the pitch that she wanted, you know, a hitter ago, two hitters ago, and didn't get. But if she can continue painting that corner, she'll get that pitch. It just takes a little bit of time. So after getting herself in a big old mess. Schoonover, now just one out away from getting out of it. But to do so, she'll have to retire Bailey Dowling. Got 
Allen, a couple of homers. There you see those RBI totals. Schoon over again, way out in front. And can she get out of a big time jam? Tom Meyer looking for some new balls. Schoonover set to work again. Base is full. Two outs. And here comes the 0-2 pitch. but they can't get a single runner. You saw the Kentucky lineup just briefly, and they will continue to experiment bit by bit. Here for what, about the last couple of weeks or so, they've had Allie Hutchins in the leadoff spot, and Aaron Koffel batting number two, and now Koffel is back in that leadoff spot. Well, Coach Lawson talked about wanting to have a little bit more of a solidified lineup at this point in the year, and so she doesn't like that it's still being toyed with. But you know, you're gonna, you got to find what works. You got to find what's going to score you some runs. And when you have a talent like Erin Koffel, she's going to get more at bats in the leadoff spot. Why not? And we caught the inside part of the plate. Beaver has been nothing short of sensational since coming over from Central Arkansas. She was sensational at Central Arkansas. Mm -hmm. She has just put together quite the career. One of those deals where Patrick Murphy said, you know, she obviously pitched in a regional that was there in Tuscaloosa. Then she puts her name in the portal. They find out she's a huge Alabama fan. Been to a lot of football games there to watch the Crimson Tide play. As Koffel tried to check her swing and it caught the bat. And, you know, if you remember to last year, there were a lot of people that thought that Central Arkansas had a shot at that regional. They right. expected them to really challenge Alabama. Alabama was in a bad place coming out of that regional, and they you know, obviously made their way through it and more. Koffel lifts it to right. Will it drop? It does. Kind of jammed her up, but she's so powerful. She was able to fight it off her wrists. And the Wildcats have a leadoff base hit. Yeah, for Koffel, you just take a look at how deep this outfield is. She does her best just to stay on it. Look how low that pitch is. They're going to see that a lot today. Throws that barrel head down, and it just falls. You have to respect the power. Johnson not able to get there, and the leadoff experiment works. So with Koffel at first, here is Allie Hutchins. All oh, got away from the catcher. Giles able to corral it before Koffel could advance. And much like Schoonover, Beaver has started off uncharacteristically inconsistent. Sometimes if you're going to throw low in the zone, it takes a little while. It's a tough pitch for a called strike. Went around and bunted at that one. The ball's fouled at third. 
Dowling was there. And now Beaver gets set to work 2-2. Check the swing, they check it first, and they said she went. Emerus Addison rings up Hutchins and said she went around, and there's one down. We'll take a look at it here and see. That's close. Definitely a hold your breath moment. You just never want to be at the mercy of that call. No, right? just absolutely not. Find something earlier in the count that you can attack. Riley Smith swings through the first pitch from Beaver for strike one. This time, Koffel takes off trying to make something happen. Ball goes into center field. White was there to back up the play. But for Aaron Koffel, that's only her fifth stolen base in eight attempts. Well, and this is a great call because if you run out of it right, you can have Riley Smith <laughs> still at bat, and she's her own kind of catalyst. Now you have her with a runner at second. And this is what they wanted. This is why the leadoff change. Smith strikes out on three pitches. And so after starting out a little shaky, Beaver has now rung up two strikeouts in a row. And here's the hard hitting right fielder from Lexington, Peyton Plotz. Just missed outside. Plots with those five homers in this her freshman year. And I just love her setup at the plate. And so after back to back strikeouts, Beaver has. Gone 3-0 on plots. She walked her on four pitches. Here's the Alabama defense. And with two outs, the young lady we talked about in the open, Grace Lorsing, takes ball one. And five straight balls issued by Kayla Beaver. Earns her a visit by Lance McMahon, the pitching coach from Alabama. Second season in Tuscaloosa. Kayla Bro played so brilliantly, coaching over at first base for Alabama. And Adam Arbor is the new man on staff. That comprised the assistance for Patrick Murphy. That's a strike on the inside part of the plate. Person would love to be able to extend those arms. Just missed on that one. She was right on it. Koffel at second. Plots at first. Two outs. Gosh, wow, that hit right off the pitcher, and that's why she's wearing that mask. My goodness, yikes. 
Yeah, it's such a difficult position to play for so many reasons, but reaction time being one of them. It looked like it got her in the upper chest. Yeah, I agree. And I don't part Tom Meyer said she didn't want any. So with two outs, the base is full. Here's Cassie Reasoner. Reasoner, this is her second straight start now. As Margaret Tobias had the lion's share of the reps earlier in the season. Reasoner fans that one now down toward the Bama bullpen. Good for Reasoner making the most of, of her opportunity. A shortstop by nature. She hasn't played second base. Getting the, the go and went in the game three with Florida and then played in the midweek. And right. you know, just really impressed the coaching staff being able to handle that second base position, which is so hard to play. Lifts that one in the air to right field. And it's caught out there. And the Wildcats, they do just what Bama did. No runs was in the midst. And, and, and listen, guys, I, uh, I miss this as Kaylee Hevelin stands in. But Patrick Murphy, the Bama head coach, was tossed right after Beaver took that shot to the chest. And apparently he said something to the umpire, to the gist of that's what happens when you don't call strikes. Might have been more colorful, but we can let the I, listeners. I, I, I said, I said to, to the, the gist, gist, of course, to of the course. Gist. We'll let the listeners, uh, you know, fill that in. But Kayla Bro in the third base box, new, new area for her. Been on third base a bunch, but not in that third <laughs> base box. Three-time All-American. So she'll coach down there, and I'm guessing that Lance McMahon over there in the first base box will be running things, but you saw earlier, bro, a three-time All-American. What a player. Right. There's not much she doesn't do well. She was fantastic as an analyst and just outstanding for the sport in so many ways. And we're going to continue to watch this now. So you've got a couple of different pitchers warming up in the Bama bullpen. Let's see who they are. 23 and 55. So you got Jocelyn Brisky and Aaliyah Johnson who are warming up after, golly, I, I'm, I'm still kind of shaking over that. I mean, Beaver took an absolute blistering shot to the chest off the bat of Grace Lorson. And she got Evelyn on strikes. That's the start that Schoonover is looking for. Coming back strong. Long inning in the first inning for both pitchers, both offenses, despite not having any runs crossed. So Schoonover finished strong at the end of the first, and she picked up right where she left off. We haven't seen that a lot lately. Just really feels like she has the flow of this game in her hand right now. Third strikeout for Schoonover as Lauren Johnson stands in. has to physically leave the park, so I'm guessing Correct. he yep. could be on the bus watching the stream right now. I got her on the knee. I think it got her on the front knee. Home plate umpire Tom Meyer kind of pointed to the elbow. And this oh. is this is pretty normal for Alabama. Oh, they will they will uh, they will take this hit by pitch. They like to get up on the plate. We talk about that a lot. The, the Evo Shield really allowed teams to weaponize sure. that hit by pitch for offensive purposes. So we played an inning and a third, and Schoonover has three strikeouts. She's walked three and hit a batter. And Kristen White squares to butt, and it falls right between Mitchell and Schoonover. They both made the right play. They dove for it. It's an infield hit. And once again, Schoonover has got herself in a hole. 
Well, despite the fact that this bunt got a little air underneath it, it was perfectly placed and it came down quickly. Any more hang time, and one of these two would have come up with it. They both read it well, just can't get there. Luckily, pet like ships in the night kind of passed each other. He's down there in the third base coaching box. And our home plate umpire calls time again. And I'm sure we'll show you that shot that Beaver took. I mean, it is. I've been doing stuff in the SEC now for four decades. And I mean, that's one of the biggest shots I've ever seen. Ball gets away from Mitchell. And it'll be a pass ball. Well, I think we might have been taking a look at that when the uh, when the toss happened. So we get everything back together here. But from a catching standpoint for Kentucky, the receiving piece has been you know, a real question mark and has caused a little bit of variety in the lineup. Oh, no, I totally you missed can, the toss because yeah. I was so, right. I, I mean, I was, I was just holding my breath, hoping that Beaver was OK. Oh, I missed it, too. Yeah, absolutely. And that, you know. Here she is. Pretty quick sequence of events. And Alabama threatening now. Again. Ball's fouled off the right side. So Johnson is at third. White is at second. One out. And the tide all the way through the lineup already. Johnson stands in for the second time. That's a little flare. Borzaleri has it. And there are two gone. And here's Kenley Kahalen. She also walked in the first inning. When the tide left the bags full. Runners at second and third now with two outs. And that ball gets away from Mitchell. A weird looking play. I'm still not sure whether that we're gonna call it a wild pitch, they say, up here in a box. See this yes. ball in the dirt, just short hops a little bit there, right by the plate. No and question. Unable to get over. Came off her hand weird. Besides being a bad pitch, it came off her hand weird. Yeah, Mitchell, great movement, just couldn't get there. And that ball, I mean, she Schoonover does have great movement, but I mean, Absolutely. it's not controlled movement tonight. I mean, that thing is going all over the place. Well, it's it's in pockets, right? I mean, we saw her in the first and right. start the second with pinpoint accuracy. Great pitch there. And obviously extremely talented. Knows <laughs> knows what she's doing, has all the all the tools, just getting everything to, to fire at the same time is what she's working on right now. Goes to the outside corner and gets the strike. over trying to get out of the second. Not gonna do it with that pitch. And it's another full count. Get a run on a hit, they leave. Excellence. That has never been had here before. Kayla Beaver delivers the first pitch ball to Blanton. We'll be keeping an eye on her after that incredible lick she took in the first. And that's a start. Show butt. 
held up. And Blanton's much more of a short gamer. She's not someone that's going to hit for extra bases very often, but has the ability to touch and go, put a ball in play, try to get a little bit of pace on it, find her way aboard here as a, as a leadoff hitter in the second. At the bottom of the zone. After that shot that Beaver took, Aaliyah Johnson continues to loosen down in the Alabama bullpen. And I can't remember the last time I've seen as many 3 2 counts in the first two innings of a game. Got her swinging. And Beaver just doing what it is that she does. Yeah, great comeback pitch here in this count. You can see challenging on the inner half. It's a lot of times you won't see pitchers throw tight, especially late in the count in on a lefty. Beaver just challenging Blanton in that pitch location. She's so accurate. And that's a first pitch called strike to the Kentucky catcher, Hallie Mitchell. Copy paste on that one as well. Just continuing to pound that zone, working low in the zone. Stays downstairs. Carissa Hamilton has been doing the majority of the catching here recently. But Mitchell gets the start tonight. That ball got past the Bama catcher Giles. Both programs searching for that consistency behind the plate. They've both used multiple catchers, you know, losing Koala and Shipman. I mean, just two mainstay right. standout catchers. Such an important position for these programs to find some consistency in. That chopper to short. And that ball is thrown across the diamond nicely by Kahalen for out number two. Great play there. Alabama's been so happy with the way that Halen has played defensively. She had eight assists the other night. It's been a long time, Coach Murphy said, since anyone on the Alabama teams had that many assists. Just plays well on that left side of the field. Murph said he thought his defense has played as well as it, he's ever had a defense play in Alabama. As Lauren Borzellari takes a call. Ball one. It's pretty high praise when you think about some of right. the athletes that have come through there and and you know for Giles and the in the catchers too and they've done really well sharing time this year. And stays downstairs. Larry, and then back to the top with Koffel, who waits on deck. Hit hard, and that'll be a base hit up the middle. Kahalen got a glove on it, but couldn't bring it in. Third base hit of the night for Kentucky, and that'll bring up their all time home run hitter in Aaron Koffel. Take a look here at this pitch, and this is just a pitch that Beaver probably wants back. It is thrown right across the heart of the plate, and credit Borzellari to be able to drive that pitch right back through. And despite the runner on wow. first, they're not going to mess around with Koffel. This is how much he respects Aaron Koffel. He sung her praises about how good she is, and I'm sure that they've talked about this you know, well, with they, or without Coach Murphy. Well, the they, had to, they had to talk about it. They, absolutely. Yeah, because he's out in the bus. <laughs> but, yeah, this was absolutely the scout that they were going to do. 
And so we'll see how Allie Hutchins, the freshman, responds to that. You're always going to circle someone on the lineup card and say, this person will not beat us, right? If somebody else can step right. up and do it. But that's that's your job. That's your job as a coach. And this is the path they've taken. A little more surprising when you have a runner on first, and now you put someone in scoring position. But Look at that, the last two seasons, the strikeouts, the base on balls. Wow. Well, most of those, to her credit, she has improved the plate process and everything, vision. But a lot of those balls aren't even, even close. She didn't have to really even right. watch much anymore there. And Coach Lawson said it. She might get three pitches to hit in the game. So here's the freshman, Allie Hutchins, who struck out her first time up. Borzaleri at second. Koffel at first with two outs. stayed downstairs. <laughs> Beavers 2-1. You see Kentucky third in the conference with extra base hits. And Alabama is one of the top staffs in the SEC from a pitching standpoint. And that one stayed downstairs. And again, look at those Alabama pitching staff numbers. And Because of what they have done, I think that's part of the reason that Patrick Murphy said what he said, right? Boy, she is just, Beaver's just struggling right now. Well, and a good adjustment from Riley Smith. You know, her last at bat, she chased three of those balls down in the zone, takes that first one. She's moved up in the box, she's staying up there and, and really trying to make sure she can get that drop ball before. You know, it falls off the table, something that she can attack. I believe that's six straight balls now for Beaver. And here comes the assist drive that came back and hit her. But here now the 2-0 pitch. Ability to play big and big games, and I, I gotta think that she's kind of moved past that and you know has, has settled down. But this is just a a trying time when you're you're not having people chase your pitches, and right now they're not chasing. And of all the people you would think, Kayla Beaver is not the person you would think would walk in a run, but that's exactly what happens as the Wildcats evens things in the first one to one. Yeah, you know that's what thirty. And in stands Peyton Plotz. And that ball is up in the air. Koffel started to go, and everybody else way, way off. And that's a wild pitch. <laughs> Throw on the brakes on this one. I think that's a good call. That ball came back so fast. I think Koffel made a good decision. Now, there are faster people that could have made it home. Not that Koffel's slow, but I mean, I thought she read that. Read that well. And of more importance, there's another one. She's going to score on this one. Those are three out of the zone, not even close. She was on the verge of walking a run in. Yeah, this is tough. I mean, you're a freshman coming in in a situation, and you, know, you can see this ball just goes right off the glove and uh, not able to connect between the battery. We're going to call that a pass ball. And four straight pitches from Jocelyn Brisky. 
Leads to the bases being full again. And here's Grace Lorson. Barreled that ball up. Against Beaver in the first inning. You mentioned the fact that Brisky has had some arm issues. Murphy said she would in all probability not be somebody who would probably ever pitch a full game. And so as she comes in and has control issues, the work continues in the Bama pen. Aaliyah Johnson is back up. And for the first time, Jay Torrance is up. That ball misses outside. Now the count is three and one, with the bases still juiced. Yeah, just such a, a different look from this Alabama team. They're 13th in the country when it comes to strikeout to walk ratio as a pitching staff. I mean, they, they don't do this. So well, there's a lot of things going on for a lot of reasons. But right now, Alabama has to find that calming force. Who's it going to be? You see Giles go out to talk to her. Try to get out of this inning. And that went out of the zone. Second run walked in this inning. And I mean, Bama's got a bunch of folks back from that World Series team last year. 15 letter winners from last year's College World Series team. But I mean, just think about it. You had one of your stars that avoided serious injury, but still, it's one of those plays you can't get out of your mind as Reeser takes strike one. Your coach gets tossed. And so, like you said, there's a lot going on for them tonight. They, they do have a lot going on, but and, and they have a lot of people back, but think about who's not back. You know, your third baseman's not back in Prangy. Yep. You know, your pitcher's not back in Fouts. Your catcher's not back in Shipman. And so you, you have those three that are just a force when it comes to keeping the temperature of the team at an even keel, keeping everybody in their performance zone. And they've got to find that person. You know, who, who is it? Who's that leader? Reesner now looks at a 2-1. Reesner has been right on it in both at bats so far. And there's a chopper to second. Boy, that was a nice play on a tough ball. And the inning comes to Texas A&M is off to their best start in SEC play. And there's just so many good teams. And Coach Lawson said on the call that SEC is deep. And you, you don't realize it until you start playing. You know, you see what people are doing. But you know, see LSU, who's so good, losing a couple. And it's going to be a, a big run at the conference. And it's probably going to come down to who you don't play. Right. There you see that SEC in the top 25. So many great teams. Florida is excellent. Both these teams know that. Reasoner in the middle of the infield, and the Kentucky second baseman has it. So the Wildcats got three runs on a hit, no errors. They left the bases loaded to take that 3 1 lead in the second inning. Alabama's DNA, they're not going to give in. You know, I mean, they, no. might, they might have a, a rocky inning and some things stacked against them, but this program and the history and the culture, and they're, they're not going to stop chipping away any way they can. Kendall Clark. Walked her first time up. That ball caught the bat. She was trying to check her swing, or did it hit her? I think we get just the foul ball. I mean, he came up with a foul ball Sign, signal, yep. but, <laughs> but Clark wanted to head to first base. I don't blame her for trying, right? Find a way on any way you can, and yeah, definitely off the bat. Scoot over ahead in the count, 0 and 2. 
just did not think this was the way this game was going to go. But Alabama loaded the bases in the first inning. Say no. So we had one punch out from the first baseman, Emerus Addison. Schoonover thought she had it. But she got him there. Strikeout number five for Schoonover. Schoonover is pumped up. Take a look at this pitch just climbing up out of the zone. Gets her to chase and a great job just continuing to change planes. When she is on, she is so good. And he just she keeps scratching that just surface and getting closer and closer. Marley Giles tried to check her swing. Fouls it off. There you see Kentucky. Five away from the Division I lead. It's really interesting because that, that team ERA or the individual ERAs isn't nearly what it is for Alabama, but boy, have they gotten the strikeouts. This time they check. And Addison says she went around and it's one and two. Well, for a pitcher, there's so many different ways to get a strikeout, right? Like, how's it happening? Is it, are you getting people to chase? You know, are you freezing them? Do you have a lot of strikeouts looking? Is your catcher very good You know, at getting you the marginal pitches? There's, right. there's so many different ways that you can notch that stat, and they're all going to do it a little bit differently. You know, a Langdon strikeout looks different than a Schoonover strikeout. Good, good point. And that's why I think coaches in this game now, not everybody does it the same way, but after you've had a look at one trip through the batting order, unless you've got somebody exceptional out there, you're just going to give them a little different look. And you have to. Hitters are so good, and there's so much tape, right? I mean, just everything at your fingertips with the push of a button. That is what's unique about this series. They didn't play last year. They're a very different Alabama team than when they last played in right. 22, last played here in 21. So it's, it's a little bit of unfamiliar territory for these two teams. I agree with you, though, too. I think... I think that elbow pad has made as much difference as anything. Yeah, and when you have an umpire who really stays strict on keeping the batter in the box, it can be a game changer for a pitcher. The ball is foul. Let's see if it gets out of the screen. Larson comes over and ran out of room. Hit a little piece of the plate. And by the rule book, that's a strike, and you want to see that called. Another one of those long, long at bats. Giles continues to stay alive with his 2 2 count. This will be the 10th pitch of the at bat. That ball was hit pretty good, but we're fouled. And Schoonover doesn't mind that too much because where she put that ball was that's the only place she could hit it. That's right. That's intentional. And why is it intentional? Because of whatever's coming next. Whatever Rachel Lawson is pulling out of her hat. And down and away. So now the count is full. As Schoonover is set to deliver the 13th pitch to Giles. Slow roller, scoot over, fielded her position well. And consistency here. And with one down, here's the Kentucky catcher, Hallie Mitchell. That's a shot right at the shortstop, Kahalen. And two pitches, two outs. 
That's a lot different from what Brisky came in with. Yes, You know, it this is. last half. And you can see it's challenging these hitters. It's a good spot. Lauren Borzileri, who's got one of the three Kentucky hits. Takes the first pitch for ball one. Borzileri, Koffel, and Larson with the three Wildcat hits. Great to have you here tonight at John Crop Stadium. Dave Baker, Joanna Lane will be with you all weekend. 6.30 obviously tonight, 6.30 tomorrow. And then 2 o'clock on Saturday. A lot of folks playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday this weekend because of the Easter holiday. That ball is a slow grounder is short. But Kahalen ends the one, two, three inning. Tide looking for run. Exciting. You can see how she's feeling, getting the fist pump and you know, really putting the team on her back right now and, and doing very well. She continues to execute that game plan of getting ahead and challenging these hitters. She's doing a great job. So it looks like Alabama is going to go for a pinch hitter. It is Emma Broadfoot, 5'7 senior, who hits for Dowling. Broadfoot out of Danville, Alabama. Transfer from North Alabama. Good swing there, but she swung through it. Crimson tied with one run. Just one hit. That came off the bat of the nine hitter, Kristen White. Got her on the inside part of the plate. Strikeout number six for Schoonover, and on cue, she delivers again. Yeah, you can see this at the pitch just running inside. Great job back there from Mitchell, positioning her glove where she's between. The plate, the ball, just being able to spot that up for Tom Meyer, and giving a great look. Haley Hevelin fouls the first pitch off. Schoonover got her on strikes. Back of the second. Excuse me, Callie. Side part of the plate. I've talked about it before on here. I mean, you can have an idea of where you want the, where you, what do you think is a strike, but it comes down to who that home plate umpire thinks is a strike, right? Yep, and the difference between the first inning and now, like the, we saw Scooter throw that last pitch a couple times in the first inning, but all the other pitches were nowhere close. Right. And so being able to be so consistent right now around the plate allows her to get that strike call, running that right in under the elbow. Ball fouled off. Schoonover set to work. Two and two. And after all that first inning trouble or so, in the first inning and the third, during that period of time, Schoonover 
had three full counts. This now her fourth. And that was a good cut by Haviland. Junior out of Three Rivers, Michigan. Larsung is perfectly positioned. And they're quickly two outs. Now we've seen so many different sides from this Alabama team in a lot of ways, but when you, you look at their stats, you know, they have so few strikeouts overall, and, and they've really struggled with that today. And, and in their SEC games, they've, they've had more. The 29 strikeouts in their six SEC games coming in just speaks to that level of competition. And with two down, here's Lauren Johnson. She was hit by a pitch back in the second. See there, ended up scoring. And she got hit by pitch again. That one missed the elbow pad. Now I'm gonna take a look at her here, but you can see this ball run in. And I think it got her in the in the back, right in the back. Oh no, it was right well, off that finger. Yep, that bottom hand. So let me see if I'm right now. So Schoonover has walked three. And I think that is her, well, it's at least her second hit batsman of the night because, because Johnson has gotten hit twice herself. And here's White, first pitch swinging. It's a fair. And Larson gets him out of the inning again. They can't cap. Brisky works, and Aaron Koffel fouls it back over top of us. So Kayla Beaver, who's been outstanding before she got hit, she pitched an inning in two thirds, three hits, three runs, two were earned, four walks, three Ks to close the book on her. And since coming in in an inning in the third, Brisky has not allowed a hit or a run. Koffel hits that one on a button. And wow, that, that ball, I love the way that Kahalem plays it short, but that ball was smoked, and she didn't even move. No, well, it's a good thing she didn't have to move because she wouldn't have gotten there. I mean, she shaded to that 5-6 hole and just, you know, stick your glove in the air and make a play and hit it right at her. I mean, literally. And she's very casual. Not, not, not dogging her or anything, no. but just very casual. And, Ball about took her glove off her hand. It was hit so hard. And here now, Allie Hutchins struck out and walked. I chop her to second. Evelyn. Flips over and quickly there, two away. You know, each game has their own story and their own identity, but this one seems to be going through a little bit of a identity crisis. And we've seen so, right. yeah, we've seen so many different things, and you know, right now pitchers having their way on both sides of the ball, retiring hitters very quickly. Ball fouled off by Riley Smith. She struck out and got an RBI and a walk. Look at that. Any way you can. That one lifted to left field. Room for Johnson, though. And it's another 1 2 3 inning. We head to the fifth, and the Wildcats lead it 3 to 1. Wow moment for Janelle on her senior day. 
a little bit unique in Alabama's program. They pick one game where each senior is honored, and it's her day. And so they ah, don't do it as a group. I and, did not know that. And the, yeah, and it's it's a really cool tradition. It gives them each their own time. And you know, they had a lot of them. They had a lot of them this year. Yeah, so they're going to have they to take a lot of days. But it's a very cool thing that uh, that program does. Just outstanding down there. Jenna has walked. They have a liner. Soft liner to third, or to first rather, I'm sorry. Here's Schoonover's 0 2 pitch. take from Johnson. We've seen several Alabama hitters chase that rise ball once they've fallen behind, especially late. As Schoonover's throwing that a little bit more and more. So Alabama got its run in the top of the second. On a wild pitch, it was an unearned run. And the Wildcats respond with three in the bottom of the second. How about that as Schoonover brings up strikeout number seven. Yeah, starts 0-2, goes upstairs twice, and you know you just get the hitter thinking, and Johnson's thinking, not expecting that outside pitch, probably thought she'd come back in or go back up, and being able to throw that for a strike, stick that spot, it's a great job from Schoonover. That's a first pitch ball. Kennelly Kahalen. Kahalen, one of only two left handed sticks in this Crimson Tide batting order. Kahalen in the two spot. Kristen White down in the nine hole. from a good crowd on a cool Thursday night. They were lined up waiting to get yeah. in here, waiting for the gates to open. It's a great game day experience. You get to bring a furry friend with you. Right, park in a park this weekend. Get a snow cone. Scoot over now, set to work, two and two. Taking a peek in a couple innings. Just looked up, and after that first and second inning, here we are in the top of the fifth, and you see the schoonovers already. This will be our 110th pitch. And that's popped up to Coffin. Down on the grass, and they're two away. And they've definitely come in big spurts, right? You've rattled off a few times now. 10 pitch at bat, 8 pitch at bat. And oh, yeah. So they're these Alabama hitters, but that's their MO. They don't have a lot of extra base hits. They don't have a lot of home runs. I and mean, they're going to challenge you. They're going to foul things off, earn their walks, earn their hit by pitches. So screw over commanding the zone and racking up these strikeouts. It's the best thing she could possibly be doing right now. Duke sure. Now on a whole 0 and 1. for her first hit of the night. Two outs here. 
in the fifth, the 0-1 pitch. Check that, that was the one and one pitch. Now it's one and two. Kentucky leading three to one. And Schoonover works to Dukeshire, one and two. Two count once again. And that missed inside. And wins the count at two and two. Kentucky, three runs, three hits, no errors. Alabama, one run on just one hit and no errors. They scored their run as a result of a wild pitch. And that ball is fouled. Dukeshire out of Kindred High School in Kindred, North Dakota. There's nine different states right? represented on this Alabama team. Very, very diverse. He, Coach Murphy's from Iowa, so he's familiar with, with that upper Midwest. And, and, and that's how much they have, uh, how well known the brand is. Here's yes. the 3-2. That ball is ripped foul in the Kentucky bullpen. Country. It's so difficult. You know, oh. South Dakota just started high school softball a year ago, and, and just weather-wise, it's tough to, to play. So credit here for Dukeshire being able to pursue her dream, find a way to play some travel ball. And I mean, what kind of window do you have to play in good weather out there? <laughs> about two weeks? Not much. Wind's always blowing. Not much. Yeah, and Remarkably, it's not here anymore, right? We've been watching that flag, right? and it's it's taking a break. Well, move it. Here's the 3-2 pitch again. That one's fouled off. <laughs> Going through some balls. Look at her 11th pitch from Schoonover. Let's do it again. Dukeshire started all 31 games at first base. Finally missed outside. Boy, what an at-bat that was. Works a 12-pitch walk. And now has got Schoonover up over 110 pitches. Now nothing going yet in the Wildcat bullpen. Yeah, but for Dukeshire, the reason that a bat is so successful is because when you get in that momentum of just, I'm swinging, I'm swinging, I'm swinging, being able to lay off is hard to do and do it on a pitch that, you know, is a, a sure ball. That ball is fouled off. What a night for Stephanie Scuno. Four walks, hit two batsmen, seven strikeouts, and has given up just one hit, one run. That's a line you don't see every day. That caught the outside corner, and now she's quickly ahead 0-2. That ball is 
rip foul. Back to scoot over. She gave up the walk, but got out of the inning. Nothing going. That they put up all the scoring in the third, and it's been pretty quick the last few innings. And this, the third full inning of work for Jocelyn Brisky, who came on in relief of Kayla Beaver. Peyton Plotz. Working on a two walk night. <laughs> Caught the outside corner. And there you see where Plotz ranks in terms of SEC freshman hitting. She has been getting it done. And that's a hard hit ball. And that got past the shortstop, Kahalen. Yeah, base hit right on cue from Plotz. And you can see she just uses the ground on this and able to punch it through. And, and Plotz has been outstanding all year long. And so many of these Kentucky athletes who are young, getting more and more time. And, Coach Lawson said, you know, hey, look, we're playing who gives us the best shot to win right now. This isn't about prepping for the future. This is about playing right now. And, and she's got an all-star class doing a lot of great things. So Plotts lifted for the pitch runner, Emery Donaldson, the freshman wearing 99. That's just the fourth hit of the night for the Wildcats. And two of those hits on the dive have gone off the glove of Kahala who has played a really nice shortstop tonight. But now here's Grace Larson, and she is swinging a hot bat. Torrance and Aaliyah Johnson working again in the Alabama bullpen. And for Brisky, she really hasn't had a lot of long outings. You know, her last several have been max of four, 4.1 innings. She threw a complete game, you know, earlier this year in February, but you know, safeguarding her arm, developing her as she goes. She's thrown a lot of pitches since entering the game. 39. And here's 40. <laughs> You see she has already matched her home run total for last year and has already blown by her extra base hit total. And she draws the full count walk. Base hit and a walk. Wildcats with a little something something working here in the home half of the fifth. I don't know if Rachel Lawson's going to go for another pinch runner. Or... Cassie Reasoner set to hit. It looks like she is. Yeah, she is going to go with a pinch runner. It's going to be Vanessa Nesby over at first. It looks like after Reasoner. She's going to go, as that ball rolls foul, she's going to go with another pinch hitter, Taylor Ebbs, to hit for Jenna Blanton. And that makes sense with Blanton being much more of a small gamer, runner in scoring position here. Nobody out. You want to capitalize as many runs as you can, so anticipating an RBI opportunity in that on-deck spot. Reasoner trying to... Move the runners over, can't do it. And now in all probability, she'll swing away on this 0-2 pitch. Oh, 
Right back up the middle, and it is off the glove of Brisky, and they won't get anybody. That ball caught Brisky by surprise a little bit, not able to bring that in. That's going to be an error on the pitcher. I mean, that's a ball she's got to feel. It is, and you know she gets her glove up there. You can just see by her body posture, and she just wasn't really ready to field. And see Coach McMahon coming out to ask some questions, and he, he wanted an interference call. Oh, and he'll come over and let us know exactly what it is. The call on the field will be upheld. There was no interference on the play. There you go. So Alabama now is out of challenges, right? Correct. And so here's the first time I think that we've seen Taylor Ebbs in a couple of weeks. We were here doing a tournament. She dove back into first base and either jammed her shoulder or her hand. And so she has been. Now what's going on? Somebody chirping from over in the Alabama. Oh, the umpire Meyer had not given McMahon the Kentucky change. Rachel Lawson did it before the at bat. And now they're set to go. the middle that's a base hit Donaldson scores here comes Nesby to RBI single for the pinch hitter Taylor Ebbs great and approach a, there from Ebbs you can see that brace on her arm with the swing and you know sometimes you get a little bit more compact and she stays tight in this pitch keeps her hands inside and just finds the barrel through nice little base hit up the middle now she's going to be lifted for, I think what will happen is Jenna Blant will come back in and re-enter. Correct. And that will keep Ebbs from getting out on the base pass and diving back into another base. That's and right. Re-jamming. That's right. So we have Blantman at first, and then we have a, a new hitter in the box. Nico Harrison will come off to pinch hit from the left side. Harrison, the senior. And so now you've got Reasoner at second, Blanton at first, and you've still got nobody out in the inning. Madison fouled that one off. Nobody out, two on. Borzaleri and Koffel to follow. See the outfield playing straight up on Harrison. She does have one home run on the year, so. Snap throw back down to second. Reasoner has to dive back in. I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that Miko Harrison homer might have been a walk off in a game we did. And she swings through that one. That's the first out, uh, first strikeout rather for Brisky. Lauren Borzaleri singled and scored in the second. Borzaleri's had two really good at bats tonight. She's had great approach. Up there, she's fallen behind quickly 0 and 2, but it just seems like she's been very intentional with what she's trying to do in her first two plate appearances. And that was a foul ball.
on the wrist. Will it get over the screen? It does into the second row of seats. Third base, step on the back for one, and that ball is thrown away. They're going to wave home Blanton. She scores. Borza Larry goes all the way to third base. And the lead is extended to six to one. And Broadfoot came in to play third base after hitting for Dowling, stays in to play there defensively. And this is a gift. This ground ball to third is scripted for a double play. Yep. Alabama has turned a lot of double plays this year. So rare miscue by this Alabama defense. And last time they decided to put Koffel on, and this time they're going to pitch to her. She has got the ability to go long fly. Got hit on her hands again. There you see how she ranks for the most homers in SEC history. Good company to have your name right. inside. And she stayed off that one. So she fought one off her hands to single in the first, walked in the second, lined out to short on a hard hit and in the fourth. That ball, wow, is that, that's going to be a foul ball. I thought it was. That could have been trouble. Awful. That's been the, the game plan for most teams all along. Get as tight in on her hands as you can. Did she go? I believe she did. And they say she did. So the inning is over, but not before the Cats score three more on a couple of hits, two errors. They leave one. Pitching coach named Rosin. Right? I love that. Absolutely. You know, and they say that your, your pet and kind of share personality. Or, and you look at some of those pictures, you think, you know what? Right? I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. So we got some defensive changes for Kentucky. As that ball is lifted to right center, hit pretty well, back to the wall, and that's gone for Marley Giles. Life in the Crimson Tide as Giles leads off the sixth inning with a solo homer. It's just the second hit of the night for Bama, and it cuts the Kentucky lead to 6-2. Take a look at this swing from Giles. You can see this ball just gets up a little bit in no man's land, not high enough to chase, but perfect to hit. And Giles puts a charge into it. Trying to spur on her team a little bit here. Her fifth of the year. First mistake that Schoonover has made. Let's see how she responds as Broadfoot fouls off the first pitch. Jenna Blanton back in the game. She's in center field. Donaldson, who came in to pinch run, she'll play right for the Wildcats. Broadfoot caught looking in her only previous appearance at the plate. Schoonover is ahead in the count, one and two. Again, Schoonover tonight, two hit batsmen. Walked four, giving up the solo homer here in the sixth, and has struck out seven. 
That ball is ripped to left. That is way gone. That is over the scoreboard. That's one of the longest hit balls I've ever seen here at John Crop Stadium. Well, that's one thing that we talked about a little bit earlier is that your balls will fly out of here. It's a small park, and Coach Murphy talked about that being something of concern for his pitching staff, but it's a concern right now for Kentucky's pitching staff. You can see this is just a great swing on this pitch and absolute no doubter that will bring out Coach Lawson. It's also got Sidney Langdon up working in the UK bullpen. I mean, Giles hit her ball. She hit it good. That ball was <laughs> smoked. Yeah, it really was. It really was. And in both and pitches, just not where Schoonover had been the last three, four innings. And there was no help. There is not a puff of wind blowing in this no. place right now. And so now for Alabama, you get a pinch hitter, Larissa Pruitt. Sophomore lefty. Pruitt will hit for Hevelin, and she pops it up on the bunt. Mitchell again can't find it. Second time tonight, she has had trouble locating a ball that's been up in the air. Yeah, both of them coming directly behind her. Not able to recognize it. The ball fouled off. And once again, Lorsen is heading to count. 0 and 2. Boy, she had been cruising along. And then she starts off the sixth inning here tonight. After the Wildcats, it jumped out to a 6-1 lead and gives up back-to-back -back solo homers. <laughs> Lorsing now joined down in the Kentucky pen by Jaden Vickers, the left-hander. Jumping out in front. All of a sudden, the count even at two and two. Got her. Eighth strikeout of the night for Schoonover as she bounces back after those back to back homers. You could come back pitch there from Schoonover, and, and you have to do that. You have to challenge the pinch hitter. You have to challenge, you know, every at bat because you want your defense to be involved. You, you want to be able to work through this. She's thrown a lot of pitches. 138 pitches now. When's the last time you, you see it more often than I have, but. Oh, it, with some pitchers, you see it all the time. You know, you think of some that, that throw regularly a ton of pitches, but we haven't seen that from a Kentucky pitcher in, in a while, at least to my no. knowledge, and much more of a, a committee-based. But, you know, one thing we know, there's a reason for everything, that there's choices that are made. And for Scootover, this just might be that opportunity for her to completely work through these little snafus that have tripped her up. She's got a little bit of a lead. Let her keep going. She has a little bit less of a lead than she had when she started this inning. Aaron Johnson, the leadoff hitter, showed Bunn and then pulled it back. And now she's behind in the count 3-0. I don't have any inside knowledge, but I've just kind of got this feeling that this might be her last hitter. If she doesn't, come back and get Johnson.
She's come back to run the count full. Three run game, sixth inning. The payoff pitch. And they say she didn't go. And Johnson reaches with a 3 2 walk. We've had a lot of these check swings today. I thought she did check that one. I've disagreed yeah. with a couple. <laughs> she looked to to hold that one up. You just the emotion gets you and you you know you throw a great pitch and but you throw a great pitch when you have that kind of count. It's a coin flip. There's a quick little flip throw. Great bunt, gonna be a tough play. Schoonover can't make it. That's a base hit is Kristen White. Put it down in that soft area out in front of the plate. And the inning continues for Alabama. They've scored a couple. They're down by three and only one out. White as a freshman has done such a great job. Okay, so. Our guys showed us that, and I just now saw them. Okay, so Daniel Gibbons tells us to watch her back foot. Yeah, you can see her come across, and, oh, and that's what and that's she's what gets you. She's out on the inside. Yeah, that's what's going to get you, and the umpire has so many things that they're looking for. If you step in front of them, that's when you're, you're toast. If you're stepping out towards the pitcher, it's really hard to see unless you have an umpire you know, at second base. But when you step across and enter into that home plate umpire's vision path calling balls and strikes, that's when they get you. One and two count, Lorsing goes across the diamond. Johnson goes to second. But most importantly, the Wildcats get the second out of the inning. And with two down, here comes Jenna Johnson, the left fielder. And that's a called strike. Johnson has walked, been put out at first, and was caught looking. As Alabama has once again gotten back to the top of the order. Lifted to the right side. Reasoner goes out, and the inning is over. Back in this one, but the task now falls to Jocelyn Brisky to see if she can hold the Wildcats in check. Two, three, four, and Allie Hutchins takes the first pitch called strike. Looking for her first hit of the night. Stays downstairs. They're under the short, slow roller, but boy, what a strong throw. And what a nice play over there by Kahalen for out number one. Kahalen continues to be a dominant force on this Alabama defense, and for Kentucky, just They've lost a little bit of their aggressiveness. I think they had there for a little while. 
taking more pitches from Brisky than when she first entered the game. She was a little wild and it took advantage of that and now she's settled in nicely. And they've allowed her to settle in. You gotta give her credit for that too. I mean, it was not easy when she came in as Riley Smith swings through the first pitch. And despite scoring three in the, you know, the bottom of the fifth, a lot of it is, has been on Brisky's inability to find the zone has led to some different opportunities for this Kentucky team. So, you know, for Brisky, continuing to nibble at the corners and throw quality pitches. The ball is hit into center field and right at the center fielder White for out number two. So Alabama got one in the second. Kentucky responded with three in the home half of the second. Then the Cats got three in the fifth. And Alabama came right back and got two in the top of inning number six. And with two outs. Peyton Plotz. Right fielder stands in. Wow, look at that, 18 and two this season. When scoring four plus, and that's where they stand right now. Well, and for Kentucky, the magic number gets a little bit more magic because Alabama has only scored more than five runs in nine games, and all of those Come have been on. against opponents with an RPI of 97 or higher. Really? Yeah. They're really riding that pitching staff in order to keep these games in hand. So for Kentucky, if they can continue scoring in that six-run realm, they might have a really great weekend. Wow. Plots hit that one a blooming mile, but pulled it foul. That ball was hit a long, long, long way. Up over the cages, not gonna, not gonna get that one back, I don't think. But boy, how about that pitch? And how about that for a quick inning? The Wildcats look to close it out. They lead by three as we head to the seventh. Three run lead, Schoonover with 153 pitches and nobody down in the Kentucky pen. Rachel Lawson has said, go get him, kid. Kentucky with six runs, five hits. Alabama has three runs on three hits. They've committed two errors. Two of those hits, back-to-back -back homers in the sixth. Okay, Halen hitting 70 points higher than her average as a leadoff. So good spot here. If you're Alabama trying to get something going, two, three, four. Ball is grounded to second and an eight breezed her up. As you said, she's a true shortstop. And she got down on the knee, but kind of played that ball off to the side, Joanna. Yeah, and this ball just looks different. You can see she gets in a position where she appears to be guessing and just trying to do her best. And no matter how hard the ball is hit, you have to move towards it. And this game and the, the way the infields are played. Anytime that you get stuck back taking a knee in the infield or having that you know, body weight go backwards, you're not going to be able to make most plays. That ball right back to the pitcher and it gets between Schoonover's legs. They get the out at first. It, 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 I don't want to overstate this, but those were two balls you'd think both of those players make the play on, right? Yeah, it's been a little tricky. I mean, this one comes through and the scoot over. It's in the air. You can see her glove is, is aligned, like she's going to catch a line drive, and then it dies, and then she's trying to turn her glove over to play the ground ball. And, you know, Koffel with a great play behind oh. her, not, not quitting on that one. That's a big out. Kendall Clark. Takes ball one. And you're absolutely right on that defensive side. You talk to Coach Lawson if you have one area that you know would really change the way your team's playing right now, what area would it be? And it's defense. 
Wow. See another miscue, just wanting to you know, shore that up. So a wild pitch on the call there from Schoonover, and all of a sudden you've got a ball that goes off the hip, and before you know it, you have a runner on third. This has been the MO of this Kentucky team all season long as Schoonover gets the swinging strike. They have something bad happen to them, and they can't stop it at one bad thing. Yeah. It turns into two, three, four bad things. And you know what? If you stop it at one bad thing, you'd never remember it because it's never the first thing. Right. It's always what happens next and next and next. And, you know, that's what this team has been working on. You don't have a lot of practices once a game starts, but when they have practice time, they work on tightening up the defense, shoring up the defense. We've seen personnel changes like Reasoner be able to try to do some of these things. That ball's fouled off. The Schoonover is now over 160 pitches. What is the most you've ever seen in a game? I have seen upwards of, of 200. And really? You, yeah, and, and you can. Seven inning game. Seven inning game, maybe not that quite that much. We're, we're approaching that territory here. Ball is ripped foul. So Kahalen is at first. She reached, or excuse me, at third. She reached on the error by Reasoner. And advanced on the fielder's choice. And that's a tapper. Scoot over. Doesn't have time to look the runner back, but she gets the second out. Fields her position. Second time she's done that. I think one of the most difficult things in this game to do is decide when do you make a pitching change. The ball's down low. So again, you've got Giles at the plate, Cahalan at third, and then you've got Broadbent, who hit one almost at downtown Lexington last time up. And there's a called strike. And so often you're, you're making that decision based on is, is what I'm getting right now from my pitcher better than whatever would come in, whether it's a matchup decision, a mentality decision, or an actual physical delivery of pitches decision. And those are a lot of factors. And I'm sure for Kentucky, they, they like what they're getting out of Schoonover. With the exception of that home run, you know, Giles hasn't hit Schoonover no. hard. So... That's three pitches that stayed upstairs. We've got pitchers down in the Kentucky bullpen, but none of them throwing yet. That one stayed up in the zone. Well, and at this point, they're they're ready. They're warm. They're just waiting for their number to be called and. So the tying run comes to the plate. Now batting number 12, Emma Broadfoot. Through last inning, Emma Broadfoot hit a ball as far as I've ever seen one hit here at John Crop Stadium. And that's saying something with Abby Cheek and some others that have put a mark on this place. Boy, you just know that Schoonover is just like, come on, just one time. Since Alabama's here, she's like a car on the last lap at Talladega. That is leaking oil. And she's just trying to get a couple of more left turns out of her. But now Giles ahead in the count, 2-0. Can she get the 3-0 pitch over? Came back to her spot on the inside part of the plate. You can 
tell she's tired. I mean, just sure. breathing, and, and who wouldn't be, right? Fouled it off. And I would think as this temperature continues to fall, more and more difficult to get a grip on the ball. Home fans on their feet here at John Prop Stadium. Scoot over. One pitch away. Giles will go from first. And that ball has hit a long way in foul down in the Kentucky bullpen. Schoonover continues to work the inside part of the play. Such a gritty performance tonight from Schoonover. No matter what happens here. I think Coughlin and Lorson coming in, just trying to slow her down just a little bit. Maybe trying to break a little rhythm from Broadfoot. Once again, the 3 2. What a night. Game on the line. Tying run at the plate. Ninth pitch of the at bat. This pitch 180? No, this this will be 179. 179, all right. For those of you scoring at home, <laughs> and I know you are. But the 178 will be insignificant if Schoonover can make the one. Broadfoot at the plate. But Schoonover has her where she wants her. She's leaning. If she can deliver that inside pitch right back underneath her hands, the one she spotted for that much needed strike moments ago. She's got to come back with yeah. that fastball on the inside, right? Got her swinging on the 12th pitch of the at bat, the 180. I'm about to drop some knowledge real quick Talking about a profession that deserves more respect Slick nurses on the front line saving lives every day From the ER to the OR they don't play They the heartbeat of the healthcare scene Always there keeping patients clean From newborns to the elderly they care for all Even when the workload feels like a brick wall Nurses in the house making rounds Stethoscope in hand they hold it down They're the heroes and scrubs no doubt saving lives, that's what they're about From administering meds to comforting fears They're the ones wiping away all the tears They'll advocate for you, be your voice in the crowd In a chaotic world, they're the calm, never loud Working long shifts, barely taking breaks 
Their dedication and passion never fakes Through the highs and lows, they persevere Their compassion shines bright, crystal clear Nurses in the house, making rounds Stethoscope at hand, they hold it down They're the heroes and scrubs, no doubt saving lives That's what they're out there Respect to the nurses, holding it down in a world where chaos often abounds They're the backbone of healthcare, can't you see? Without them, where would we be? Nurses in the house, making rounds Stethoscope in hand, they hold it down They're the heroes in scrubs, no doubt saving lives That's what they're about